pray as we go. Heavenly Father, thank you, God, that this altar, that this room is all for your glory. It's all for your wisdom and word to come out and flow through. I thank you, God, that you've been flowing through the songs, through the music, through the words, through the connection we have with one another, God. We are your body, which you are the head of, Lord. So I pray that you would invest in us, that you would speak clearly, that you would show each of us in our hearts, how we need to address our souls and and look a little bit deeper, God. And in the ways that it's been hard to slow down, I pray that you would slow down minds, God. Uh, And for some of us, we just need to wake up, Lord. And so I pray that you would wake us up to what you have in store. Help us to look deeper with the Spirit's discernment, God. Without you, we can do no good thing. And God, so we abide in you, the vine and the giver of life. Would you bring us your love and care uh, and help us in this year of soul care? It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. And so this year of soul care, we're going to be focusing on emotional health and mental health, thinking about the ways that God is wanting to restore those areas of life that are not only about what we do in religious ways and things that can be seen by your pastors or leaders or things that can be seen within the community yourself. It's not just about that outside fruit, but about what's on the inside and what God is doing to shape you and form you and to address even those things that aren't readily seen, like the hurts we have, some of the hang-ups, some of the habits. We're going to be looking into being holistically healthy. And what that looks like to address often is spiritual disciplines. So disciplines that help us to be present and centered upon God to when we pray that we would be actually hearing from him him and quieting our hearts so that we can listen. And that also involves community support, seeing God work in and through the wisdom of others around us. Oftentimes that happens in our small groups. This month of September is the month we launch our New Song LA small groups. There's information about that on our community wall. Also next Sunday, we're going to have a formal launch of small groups, so you'll find out more info too. We also have groups like Monday night prayer meeting and also Thursday Bible study, which is really growing. And that's another great place to connect with other believers. And if you go consistently enough, maybe you'll get to be known and others will get to know you a little bit deeper and be able to connect, confide, and even just be able to bless one another uh, in, in, in that, that close connected community. Also, we're planning to connect more with support groups for those of us who are struggling with particular areas or there's habits we're struggling with that we haven't been able to kick or there's just these hurts that we're not able to process fully. We want to provide support in communities like Celebrate Recovery and other uh, support group ministries. Also, the, the whole... The, the whole part of what, what we talk about in soul care, it's not just so that you'll be emotionally healthy. We see emotional health as a priority in discipleship, that this is really about getting us closer to Christ and who Jesus was, who he was a holistically healthy man on earth. Even as he was God, he was fully man on earth, and he showed what it means to be emotionally, mentally, and spiritually healthy, and it was all a part of, of, uh, of how God formed us. First Thessalonians 5 and verse 23, Paul writes, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. What does the word sanctify mean? It's kind of a big, broad theological word, but what, what, what does sanctify mean? Anybody? Purify, yes, definitely to purify, to become holy, even set apart, right? That God is doing a work of refining, of working on, of purifying. And sometimes that can feel a little bit of like when a, when a diamond is, is burned up and all its impurities are, are burned in the fire and, and, and that can hurt, that can cause some pain, uh, just thinking about <laughs> being, being burned. 
But it's, it's in those places where God is often purifying us and uh, centering us more on, on who he wants us to be. It's not a problem that we're, in, that, that, that we're struggling. It's that he is, at, uh, he is at work and that he's healing and forming you uh, in, in, for a better season. And we see that Paul mentions three elements of the human experience here, the body, the spirit, and the soul. And they are inter- interdependent on one another. We see the body uh, is the, the flesh, the outer person. Um, that, that's your actions, your conversation, your speech, relationships, and community you see. It's even the fruit you see of your, your labor, of your ministry and blessings that God gives you that you can tangibly point to on the outside. The spirit, conversely, is that realm of spiritual work within a person. That's where the elements of faith come in, where you're born again, where it's the spiritual gifts like prophecy, like teaching, like healing, service, leadership, all these things that are not just your own strength, but these are God-given for you uniquely to be a blessing to the body, God's presence even. And then we talk about the soul that's distinguished. It's the inner person, your mind, your emotions, your will. That's the part we're really looking to address in this year ahead and also think about how it all works together, the body, mind, and soul. One of the movies of uh, the past couple years that really addresses uh, the emotions of human beings well and gets you thinking and discussing what does it mean to be uh, conversing with the emotions in our bodies and how to deal with them well. There's a movie called Inside Out. How many of you have seen Inside Out? Quite, quite a few of us. It's a great movie. It's, uh, I'm not going to give away a lot of the plot, but we, we, we really want you to come and see it. And, and there's a sign up actually at the community wall. So do sign up so you'll have enough popcorn um, so, because I, I, I eat a lot of popcorn, so we need to know how many people are going to be there. Uh, don't say I didn't warn you. But Inside Out uh, is about, a, I'm, I'm not going to give it all away, but you can get this from the trailer. It's about a, about a young girl whose family is actually going through a move. And so their, her father has just gotten a job to a new location, so she has to relocate, find new friends, adjust to a new school, adjust to some new relationships. And so it's all about the emotions that are actually going on with, within her heart as she processes through, oh, man, my emotions are in conflict right now. You know, I feel one way and then the other way, and... and um, things are out of my control and there's so much fear and anxiety about all the new things that, that are approaching. So we'll, we'll, we'll see more about it in this movie, but uh, it's, it's one great picture of what it looks like to grapple and wrestle uh, with the emotions and in, in, in the part of our bodies that is so. In uh, this year ahead, uh, we're going to look to dwell deeper into what is your story? What are the things that you uniquely are going through and how can we help in, in battling that with you? And, and also in, as pastors and leadership, we realize that this is a challenge upon ourselves to go deeper as well and to share with you what we struggle with so that you also can see that, hey, we, you know, we have issues too. We're, we struggle just like any other believer and we uh, are looking uh, to the Lord for help in caring for our own selves just as we, we long to care for yours as well. I was thinking a little bit about my own story. In uh, growing up, this picture sums a lot about how my, myself and my family of origin, this is a, a, lot, a lot of the ways of how we dealt with our emotions. What we did is we bottled them up. You see here a bottle of fear, a bottle of anger, jealousy, anxiety. Oftentimes in our family, we would, you know, we wouldn't always say this, but we would subconsciously discourage talking about emotions because we felt like, yeah, you know, we're we're tougher than our emotions. You know, like <laughs> my my parents were immigrants; they came from India, and you know, India there's poverty all around um, in, in places. And so they, they, they were always looking to come to this country and start a new life and not look back. And so, you know, th- they didn't have time to talk about your fears. You know, go to school, you know, get, get yourself a good job, get a master's and, you know, 
then get a job that actually pays well. That, but, you know, that's, that, that's a whole other thing. But, you know, the, the whole thing was, you know, get an education, get financially secure, and then you'll be happy. And, hey, we're Christians too, so that'll make you happy. But, you know, you, 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 know, you got to focus. You got to get, get ahead and, 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 and get, get yourself right. And so th- there was often no time to really talk about these things that, that were going on. And I, I noticed that, you know, some of those things, it, it was actually positive, right? There's nothing wrong with wanting to, to get over things and, and, and to get, um, to move forward in your life and to, to keep growing. But there would be times where these bottles would keep fi- getting filled and somehow overflow over little things, we noticed, right? So, like, you know, th- there would be boiling, boiling point moments or times where these bottles would all of a sudden explode, and we never knew when it would happen. Sometimes it would be as simple as somebody's keys are missing around the house. And then, it, you know, all the other bottles are full, and, 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 and so then there's just this overflow of anger or overreaction over something so small. And it really isn't about that small thing. It's just that we're riding so high on all those other Areas that haven't been addressed, that haven't been talked about, haven't been dealt with. We, you know, we're not seeking prayer on it. We're not seeking to encourage one another in it. Some of it also is about shame. You know, in, in our community, you don't really want to reveal too much about your weaknesses because we felt like that's an area for people to gossip about you then. Or like, oh, that boy is soft right there, you know, <laughs> or that boy, you know, that, that person doesn't have it together, or that person, you, you know, they're, they're, they're weak, you know, but we, we didn't want, want to reveal those things, and so it felt like, okay, like we've got to bottle them up. But it would, it, invariably, it would explode. And I, f- and, and I, s- I would see our, our family kind of keep falling into ways where, like, things look good on the outside, and, and, and Jesus is doing a lot of great things, but we wouldn't really open up. And so over the, the last several years, we've gotten to a place where we're actually growing in this, where we've seen the need to, okay, let's just get a little bit more real and, and talk about some of the ways that we feel hurt, uh, some of the ways that we're, you know, depressed or sad or jealous or, you know, open up more. And we've seen a lot of growth in that area where now uh, we don't have quite as many blow-ups. We don't have quite as many ways where the bottles are breaking. I thought the word uh, for us this morning was Jesus wants to pop them bottles. <laughs> so uh, Jesus <laughs> wants these bottles in our lives to, to be dissipated and, and to, for us to be able to share with one another and with him so that he can heal some of these areas and so that we can know that he is caring for us. We can't fix ourselves, and people can't fix us, but Jesus can. Amen? So as we think more about soul care, we're going to be challenged towards this call to go deeper in our lives, to examine ways we grew up in our families of origin, ways we grew up in, in our college settings, in, in relationships, whether we're single, whether we're married, in all these ways, we, we come across the, these moments where God is calling us to look a little bit deeper and to get honest with ourselves, to even be transparent so that we can grow and uh, get, get wisdom from God and one another. There's a, this great quote from a book we, we are uh, going to mention in a bit called The Emotionally Healthy Church by Peter Scazzaro. It's one of our resources for this year ahead in soul care. Pastor Adam actually mentioned it last week. Emotional health and spiritual health cannot be separated. It is impossible to be spiritually mature while, rema- while remaining emotionally immature. What Peter Scazzaro means by this is that Emotional health isn't just this fad and this good way of living and a way that we can just grow in happiness. We're not here as a church to grow your happiness necessarily. We're here to worship the living God and to follow his word. But part of his word, in order to actually authentically grow as a disciple, emotional health is tied into that strongly. Jesus was a very emotional person. The Bible talks very in depth about the emotions that the prophets experienced, that the people of God went through, and how they dealt with them, with God, and with being honest and transparent. That was how God 
really entered in to heal and to bless and to call them to the greater things. And so we'll be looking at what, what it means to be emotionally mature, but in a way that, that causes us naturally to grow as disciples. 